Hi guys, I'm Karen Cavett and this is part four of my Jigsaw Puzzle Collection video series. If you've made it this far, you know that I own a lot of puzzles. It's probably my favorite hobby, so much so that I don't even let myself do it unless I have like a full day to dedicate to a puzzle because if I start a puzzle, I will literally just neglect every other responsibility in my life until I have finished the puzzle. But anyway, I am here at my parents' house. I'm showing you guys all of the puzzles that I grew up with. Um, if you missed part one, that was all the puzzles I have at my apartment in LA. Part two was all of the puzzles that are over a thousand pieces. Part three was all of the puzzles that are exactly a thousand pieces. And this is part four. This is all of the puzzles that are under a thousand pieces. So in this one are going to be a lot of the puzzles that I kind of grew up doing, a lot of my very early puzzles. Starting with a puzzle that is very special to me. This is the very first puzzle I can ever remember doing in my entire life. I think I was probably like like five-ish, like four maybe. Obviously at the time um, my mom did most of the puzzle because I was too young to really like be able to, to tackle a puzzle like this. But maybe one of these days I'll try this out for myself, see how quickly I can do it now. It's just this dessert scene. It honestly looks very 90s. Is there a date on here? There's no date, but it's made by the company Nord Evco and there's a PO box for New Jersey. So who knows if that company is still around. Oh, this one is so cute. Okay, I remember doing this a couple times growing up. So this one is a family puzzle made by the company Seiko. Seiko. But what it means is that there are three different sizes of pieces all in the same puzzle. So I think it goes bottom to top or top to bottom, like big pieces, middle pieces, small pieces, and they all obviously interlock to make just one finished puzzle. If you have a family, the little kids can do the ones with the really big pieces and then so on and so on. And it's just this really cute illustration of a little mouse eating a little her, her little dinner and it's just so adorable. Oh man, I remember doing this one several times growing up. I think I did it with my sister a couple times back when I still did puzzles with other people and I didn't insist on only doing them alone, which is what I do now, because when I do them with other people, they move the pieces around and then I lose my train of, you know, my process. And anyway, this one is called Cats Among the Toys. It is by, the illustration is by Leslie Ann Ivory made by the Great American Puzzle Factory. This one is actually fairly difficult, even though it's only, oh wait, actually, oh whoops. <laughs> so this one is apparently over a thousand pieces. So this should have gone in the other video. Uh, I just, since I had always done this one growing up, I assumed it was less than that. This is another one that I remember doing very early in my life. It is just a very standard hot air balloon photo, which I feel like is kind of the perfect beginner puzzle because you have all these really distinct blocks of color and it's only 550 pieces, so it's not too hard. This is by Coda Color, apparently. Do they still make puzzles? Are they still a company? Um, oh, Kodak and also Rosart. Okay, I don't know. These, these puzzles are licensed by so many different companies. This one's kind of cool. So this is a silk effect jigsaw puzzle. This is made by Bits and Pieces. It's 750 pieces. And so if you look at the actual pieces, they have this kind of, I don't know what you would call it, like the style of printing or the paper that was printed on or something. It's kind of silky. It's not just, um, just like standard paper. I like this illustration style with these kind of gold outlines. It does make it fairly difficult to do as a puzzle, but since it's only 750 pieces, that's kind of a nice challenge. So this one's pretty fun. What is this one? Oh, I think I've only done this one like once or twice. The colors in this are so drab and so boring. So this is just some like bridge with a train and a guy fishing. This is by The Puzzle Collection. And this was never one of my favorites. This is from 1999. Really sad, boring colors. So this one um, was supposed to have a picture kind of glued to the front. Apparently it's not glued there anymore. I think it might be inside. Let's, yeah, okay, here it is. So that's the picture that is supposed to be 
glued onto the front. At some point in my life it fell off. But anyway, this is 500 pieces and it is the Magic Effects Collection, which I don't know if you can, how well that's picking up on camera, but it's super shiny. I don't even know how to describe it. It's not just glossy, it's like the colors themselves are shiny and that carries over onto the pieces. They're super, um, again, not just glossy, like extra shiny, which actually makes for a pretty good challenge in the puzzle because you can't just, you know, it's not just color after color, everything is like the light is bouncing off it in such interesting ways. And again, the illustration is so stylized that when you're looking at just a little puzzle piece of it, it's actually pretty difficult. So um, yeah, I really, I really like this one. Oh, these are so cute. Okay, I remember doing these with my sister again when we were probably like, like 10 years old, or I was probably 10, or she was 10, some, somewhere in that age range. But it is these really long horizontal cat puzzles. So it's all these cats inside of birdhouses. <laughs> it's so cute. So this is 700 pieces. It's called Kitty City, and it's just the most adorable thing. It's also the most like 90s thing I've ever seen. Like, look at that text. This is so great. We also have a second one, which is Pup flower, gar flower garden, <laughs> but it's puppies and they're in flower pots. I think I like the cat one more just because there are more different colors. This one is just a whole lot of purple, but they're both really cute and they're both really fun. Next up, oh, this one's kind of fun. Um, so this is an an over 500 piece puzzle. What is with the Great American Puzzle Factory and not telling you exactly how many pieces are in their puzzles? Um, this one is a round puzzle, which is interesting. So all of the edge pieces have kind of the round outline on them, although in the center, they're just kind of normal puzzle pieces again. But this texture in the background is really fun to put together. And then the cats themselves, honestly, I don't love doing puzzles of just giant fur, like giant sections of fur kind of annoying, but it's round, which is something different, so that one's cute. Ooh, okay, so this was kind of an, um, like a precursor to the Waz Gidge puzzles, which I talked about in part one of this video. Those are the ones where the picture on the front is not the picture you're putting together. It's a clue to the like mystery of the picture you're putting together. So this one is the birthday mystery, and basically you get a little short story and then you also get a jigsaw puzzle and you don't know what the picture on the puzzle is. You put together the puzzle and then you solve the mystery that was in the short story. So it's only 250 pieces, which was fine, especially since you don't have a reference picture. I guess if you're just getting started with puzzles like that, you wanna start a little easy. So this is made by the company be Puzzled Junior. It's one of the puzzling pen pal mysteries. And I only ever had this one. I don't know if they made other versions of it but this is from 1991, so good luck tracking down the other versions if there are any. So I like that one, especially since growing up, I really only had standard puzzles where the picture on the front is what the puzzle is and this was something different. Oh, these are so fun. Okay, so this is a silhouette jigsaw puzzle. Again, made by Seiko, Seiko, whatever that company is. But basically this one is made of cork so the pieces are really thick and then it has all of these specialty pieces that fit throughout it and so you can pull them out of the finished puzzle and make different little scenes with them like there's a little train and then there's like a horse and a bird and all the pumpkins are kind of their own little pieces and the illustration is really cute also the border isn't just a standard rectangle it has all the, it has a really interesting shape so you don't get to just like start with the border. You just pick somewhere in the middle, get started and work your way out. So this one is 528 pieces, which is an interesting number, I guess, since it's not just a standard rectangle. You can have as many pieces as you want. And then I also had this one, which is the same sort of thing. This one was 563 pieces, a little harder. And this one is just more of a town like circus scene and you can actually pull out all of the different circus characters to make this little scene. And it even comes with little um, cardboard pieces so that you can stand up like the different animals. And yeah, these are just really fun. And again, it's just something different beyond the normal rectangle puzzle that everyone's done a million times. 
or at least I have. And finally, the very last puzzle I have to show you. This is another one that is very near and dear to my heart. This is another Christmas puzzle. It is 550 pieces, and it's just the cutest little illustration of a Christmas scene. I have done this one so many times, I literally can't even count. I do it every single Christmas, and I have for the past at least 10 years, partly because it's just really easy so I can do it in like one night, and also because now that I've done it so many times and I know the picture so well, I always try to start with a different section. So I don't even do like the border and then do this section and then do that section each time. Like maybe this year I'll start with the tree and then I'll do the people and then I'll do the sky and then I'll do the house. And then next year I'll start with the house and then I'll do the church and then I'll do the sleighs and then I'll do the tree. <laughs> and yeah, every year it's just a different challenge and I try to challenge myself to come up with different ways to do it every year. All right, so those were all of my puzzles. If you watched all four parts of this video, good on you. I give you a round of applause because that is a lot of time to dedicate to listening to me talk about jigsaw puzzles. So I would love to know in a comment down below, have you ever seen any like interesting jigsaw puzzles, like the ones that are like the mystery or the ones that have interestingly shaped pieces or a weirdly shaped border? I would love to hear if like if you guys know of any cool puzzles that you think I would like. So if you missed the first three parts of this video series, I'm gonna link them right down below. And at the end of this video, I talk about all of my puzzles that are a thousand pieces, all of my puzzles that are over a thousand pieces, and then all of the puzzles that I have back home in Los Angeles. So I think that's going to be it from me. Happy puzzling. I hope I have managed to reach a few other puzzle enthusiasts or have taught you guys, if you didn't really know about the world of jigsaw puzzles, maybe taught you something new, showed you how much variety there is out there. All right, I don't know how to end this video, so I'm just gonna go. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.